Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles, a business strategy podcast where we provide insight to those looking for creative, executable strategies built around the latest disruptive ideas, innovative cultures, product creators, and marketing solutions. Hello and welcome to the Visionary Chronicles. Today we're going to talk about the DNA of a visionary leader and how to become visionary. You know, I'm not saying everybody's going to be a visionary, but I got to tell you, after releasing the visionary brand, the success formula behind the world's most visionary brands last year, it's probably the number one or number two question that I get. It's often asked, and I'll say it's an answer seldom achieved. So when I talk about the DNA of a visionary leader, we've talked about in depth on the visionary brand about a visionary brand. Like what is the formula for success on a visionary brand? So today I'm gonna talk on the visionary leader, the DNA and makeup of a visionary leader. And the timing is on purpose. Um, I just released, or not released, but I just finished the manuscript on my new book, The Visionary Leader. And that's going to be a complement to the visionary brand. So we're gonna talk about visionary leaders. And what's interesting about the visionary Leader is what I found is over the generations, it's a very broad spectrum of visionary leaders. And I think the best avenue to to look at this is what is a visionary and what's the makeup of a visionary? So we talk about this question and I say the answer is seldom achieved because there's so many, let's say components or elements as I talked about with the visionary brand on how to become a visionary leader. So in today's podcast, I felt it would be beneficial to discuss this makeup, this DNA of what a visionary leader looks like. Now, not all of these visionary leaders will have all of these attributes, but I can tell you in most instances they do. And we're also gonna take a little bit of spin, a little bit of a spin today, I'll say, that we'll talk about what holds leaders back from becoming visionary. So when we talk about the DNA makeup of a generational visionary leader, and I say that on purpose because there have been what I would call visionary leaders, but maybe they've been a visionary leader for a few years. What I talk about and classify visionary leader as somebody who's impacted our world and had done it for generations. The Gandhis, the Steve Jobs of the world, whatever it may be that they've actually impacted the way we live life. Edison's of the world, the Einstein's of the world. And these are the visionaries that I put together in the visionary leader. So it's a very interesting, hopefully, a <laughs> book for you to want to, to read. And I will say for those listeners out there, and I've had a lot of interest already with the, with the manuscript, is that we are going to be sending out some pre-releases of the book. For those who are interested in reviewing the book or want a free copy of the book, we'll be doing that soon. And and those that are part of the podcast, listen to the podcast, we'll have the opportunity to do that. So we would appreciate anybody that would like to take a crack at reviewing the book. We would certainly appreciate it. So today we're going to talk about that DNA, I said, the makeup of these generational visionary leaders. So it's a combination of, of inherent traits that you'll see with these visionary leaders. There's learned skills, there's these experiences that enable them to inspire and guide others towards a compelling vision of the future. And there's one aspect you should know as I have talked with and and been a part of visionary leaders and when writing the book, what I find in most instances is the big difference between visionary leaders and what I call present day leaders is one looks at the present, one looks at the future. And one has the ability not only to look at the future, but to realize that future and bring it into our daily lives. That's a huge bridge to cross for most people and why most people don't become visionary. So while there isn't a single formula that defines every visionary leader out there, I can tell you there's several characteristics or what I call these principles. And I talk about it in the books, these principles of the greatest visionaries in the world. And and some of these characteristics associated with them we'll talk about. Now these are what I call that DNA, the elements of this formula that make up 
a visionary leader. And the first is actually two words. I, I made it two words for a reason, is clear vision. A lot of people can talk about in generalities. And this is when we whiteboard with Liquid Mind and we talk to leaders, entrepreneurs, leaders of companies, and those aspiring to become visionary for their brand as well as themselves personally. One area that we find that becomes very blurry, what we call blurs the lines or it's a very gray matter for people is most of the time people will ask, what's your vision? That's not the right question. What is your clear vision should be the better question. And what it is is visionary leaders have a clear and compelling, and compelling drives passion of the future that inspires and motivates others. So they have, they're to a degree, storytellers. And, and that's why it's a very eclectic group that you have with visionaries because they are this artistic, the ability to motivate others, the ability to inspire others, but it's all driven from an authentic vision that they put together for their brand or for their company. So they articulate this vision in a way that resonates with the team, with everybody inside the brand and company and provides direction for their actions to achieve the vision. Now, again, clear vision. Now, the definition here is that visionaries have a clear and compelling vision that allows them to inspire and motivate others. But the most important aspect when we whiteboard it that most people don't think of is that it not only resonates with those inside the brand or the company or the team, but it provides direction. That's the biggest issue that we see with brands in order for them to def to define, not only define, but to actually realize their vision is there's no clear vision that provides direction. So hopefully you can see that when you are setting your vision, do not make it general, make it specific, and then put a step process towards achieving that goal, effectively like climbing a mountain one step at a time is you don't leapfrog all the way to the top of the mountain. That's a general, very gray matter vision. There are steps along the way, faults that you'll have to go through, valleys that you'll have to go through, and mountaintops you'll achieve along the way to achieving your vision. But it has to be very, very clear because you're not the one achieving the vision. It's your team that's achieving the vision. So this clear vision provides direction. So that's why you need this first one, clear vision. And I went more in depth on this one because it's probably, probably the most important one. The second one is innovative thinking. And when people think about innovation, they think about ideation process, they think of concepts, that's all true. But visionary leaders are often creative thinkers. Think of Steve Jobs, and I use Steve a lot, but he, he obviously was visionary, generational visionary. And I have Steve profiled in my book as well, along with Edison, along with, uh, along with Einstein and others, and that, that Martin Luther King, that all of these innovative thinkers are often creative thinkers willing to challenge the status quo and explore new ideas and approaches. And it's a great one on innovative thinking. It isn't just ideas. It's a solution to a process of why things are the way they are. That's the status quo. It's very, very important that if you want to be a visionary leader is that you challenge that status quo and you explore these new ideas to achieving that beyond the status quo. So you wanna make sure that whatever you do, that you move beyond the status quo and explore new ideas and approaches. And what I find is these visionaries are fearless in taking risks and experimenting with unconventional solutions to complex problems. And unconventional solutions are not, what is the competition doing? Innovative solutions are asking the question, why are things done this way? I don't care if it's a product or a process, and then how do we change it? This provides value to the end user, right? So you wanna make sure 
on innovative thinking that you're providing value. Value is a very key term when you talk about innovative thinking. If you can't provide value, why are you a brand or a company and the service or product that you're offering is not going to be of value to those you're trying to sell it to. So innovative thinking is a very important aspect to becoming visionary. That's the second one. The third one is strategic thinking. Visionary leaders have a strategic mindset. They can see the big picture while understanding the details to achieve the vision as a whole. And this sets a lot of visionaries apart from one another. You may have one visionary that has a great idea, but he has no idea how to commercialize it. That is not generational. You need to provide direction because you're the one with the vision. You're the one that's providing that step process to how you're going to succeed and commercialize and successfully bring to market this product or this service. So you need to have strategic thinking. They develop long-term plans and strategies to achieve the vision. And they're adept and what I say skilled at adapting to challenging circumstances. Think of COVID, right? It's, you know, you just because this is a challenging circumstance, it doesn't mean you forget who you are in the principles that built your brand long-term. So you want to make sure that you have strategic thinking. You just don't think, but it's very strategic. You have a clear vision, innovative thinking, and strategic thinking. And then you also have empathy and emotional intelligence. You always don't want to be a jerk. So you want to understand that they're working for you. Your team is working for you. You execute your, you execute your vision through your team. You're not the one that does it. There's many people, and you'll see it on one of the weaknesses, it's very clear that humility is a key component to being a visionary leader. People see it in you. They see the humility. They know that in order for you to achieve your vision, you're going to need my help. So that's a key component to empathy and emotional intelligence, understanding and reading the room and reading your team, challenging them, building passion into them, but also understanding they need a break. <laughs> you know, they understand the, lead, the needs and motivations and emotions of their team members. They're empathetic listeners. You may not think so of visionary leaders. Some are more empathetic than others. I'll give you that one. But all of them have empathy and all of them have emotional intelligence, especially in the day and age that we live in today. There's brilliant young talent out there that will allow you to bring your vision to reality. But you need to understand they're going to follow you as a visionary leader if you have a clear path, a clear direction, drive passion and understand and have emotional intelligence as to their needs, as they're building and growing and executing this vision for you. So you have to have that empathy and also the ability to connect with people personally and build strong, and I'm gonna say the word again, authentic relationships based on trust and mutual respect. Again, I'll say this is an important component and keeps people away from burnout. You know, I've been there. Um, I've been inside the, the four walls of Tiger teams and different uh, companies and brands where the visionary leader pushes us, and we love it. But at some point, you got to take your foot off the brake. And this is what we're talking about with empathy and emotional intelligence. You have to understand what the needs are of your team. So you're going to connect with them pe personally Build strong, authentic relationships, not just one because you feel you have to, it's because you want to. And it's built on trust and mutual respect. The fourth is, is courage. You know, actually, the fifth, <laughs> I've gone through these so quick, is courage and resilience. And when we talk about the DNA or makeup of a visionary leader, I love the word courage. And resilience is on the back of courage. It allows you to take the blows along the way. Visionary leaders demonstrate courage and resilience in facing these challenges, these setbacks they're inevitably going to face. It's not if, but when. 
these challenges are going to come up. So they're not deterred by failure or criticism, but instead they use these setbacks as opportunities for growth and learning, as most should. Don't get frustrated. Don't get mad. You need to understand this is part of the process. And I say three words when I go whiteboarding with Liquid Mind, and, and that is trust the process. And that's what we're talking about here. Courage, the courage to change is going to put many barriers in front of you. The challenge, the status quo requires resilience. So the fifth is actually courage and resilience. Sixth is charisma and influence. Now this is one I'll say not a lot of people have. And boy, when you're gifted with charisma and influence, it makes a big difference with your team. When people are down, there's been a failure. You come in with a positive mental attitude, the PMA, I call it. And they possess this charisma and the ability to inspire and influence others through their words and their actions, especially when things are going bad on the project. You need to make sure that your vision is achieved. You're taking a step-by-step -step process. Seeing and this is really important. What they see is the positive and the negative. You can either think of things positively through challenges, or you can think of things negatively. It's entirely up to you. your choice. I say black and white is charisma and influence is driven by your ability to con contain and maintain and sustain a positive mental attitude, a PMA. So they have this magnetic presence that draws them to people and makes them effective communicators and persuaders. So charisma and influence is one that very few. In the book, I think I profiled 20 generational visionary leaders. And only a few truly had this charisma and influence. But if you have it, like Gandhi, it's, it impacts the world and the life of millions, literally. And then adaptability and learning agility. Visionary leaders are adaptable and open to learning new skills and perspectives. They're constantly learning. They're flooding their brain with new knowledge, new information, whatever they can get. They're willing to change course if necessary, pivot, but never go off course if necessary and continuously seeking new opportunities for growth and development. They don't wait for the competitors. If you're the leader and you're the visionary and the innovator and the disruptor in your channel, you need to have adaptability and learning ability. You can't learn from others. You have to learn yourself. You have to be in front of others, adapt, implement, execute, and have product or services in the marketplace that others are going to follow. There's nothing better, and I've been part of brands, where we were always the leader in the category. And everybody would follow us. Lens technology, frame technology, whatever it happened to be with Oakley, everybody was following us. But Jim Gennard, the founder of Oakley, knew he didn't necessarily care what the competition was doing as long as we were doing our job and we were learning and we had adaptability. And Jim had charisma and influence like no other that I've seen out there. So adaptability and learning agility is an important aspect to continually flooding your brain with ideas and what the next step or process is in executing your vision. And then we've got ethical and values. And this is the last piece that we've seen with visionary leaders is that they operate with integrity and they're guided by strong ethical values. They prioritize the greater good of a personal gain to strive as they positively impact the world, their community, their customers with their products or their services. I can't tell you how important this is because this builds trust and loyalty, not only with your customer, but with your team, your company, your brand, and what builds generational leaders is a values-driven organization that doesn't compromise. So that's a very important one. So again, as we go through these, the clear vision, innovative thinking, strategic thinking, empathy and emotional intelligence, courage and resilience, charisma and influence, adaptability and learning agility, ethical and values-driven. You know, while not every visionary leader will possess all these traits clearly to, to the same degree. You know, you know, they typically exhibit the majority of these qualities. The truly generational leaders have the majority of these. 
that enable them to effectively lead and inspire others towards a shared vision of their future and their vision. So when we talked about pivoting or spinning this a little bit, now we'll take a look at what typically holds leaders back. What we found in in the book, The Visionary Leader, is there's some traits that hold leaders back from becoming visionary. These traits often hinder their ability to be innovative, to set any type of compelling vision that would inspire others to follow. So here are some of the traits that prevent leaders from becoming visionary. The first is a short-term focus versus a long-term focus. Leaders overly focus on the short-term or short-term results, let's say, or immediate challenges may struggle to think strategically and envision the future. They just can't do it. They can't envision what the future looks like. They All they know is the past and the present. And you've seen these leaders. This is a very typical leader. They just want to get you through the day. They want to get you through the week. They don't inspire you by what's coming down the pipeline and what the future looks like. And it's perfectly fine for what I'll call commodity companies or brands where they don't really have a brand. And, but it's not okay for those leaders in their industry or their category that need a truly visionary leader. So they prioritize quick fixes over long-term solutions. You'll see the patchwork, I call it the Band-Aid. I've seen that with Liquid Mind all the time, is that leaders want to Band-Aid things versus actually fixing things. It's more challenging to fix things. I get it. But if it falls apart every six months and you need to patch it up again and you got Band-Aids all over it, why not just fix it? So it prevents them from developing a visionary outlook. The second is a resistance to change. Because they're at the top, they feel that even though others may have great ideas, they just feel it's too hard. So they resist change or they're overly attached to the status quo. And that's why I put up in the visionary was you challenge the status quo. Resistance to change means you don't challenge the status quo. And you struggle to embrace new ideas and innovations. You just don't have this creative mindset. You just can't envision it. So they're reluctant to change the existing norms of the world or to explore alternative approaches, limiting their ability to envision a different future at all. So it's very hard when they're resistant to change. The third is very, very common. And this is traditionally what prevents people from going to the top leader in their company is micromanagement and all of us have been there and leaders who micromanage their teams and need to control stifle creativity and innovation and i talk about stay in your lane when we talked about the visionary brand um, i've had experiences with leaders where they're brilliant finance people but frustrated designers but they feel the need to dip their hands in the design room every day. So stay in your lane, micromanage all you, um, you want, but you're gonna stay in a commodity brand position. They struggle to delegate tasks, they empower or empower others, which is another critical part to being a visionary leader is empowering others to execute your vision. They don't empower others to take ownership of products, they hinder new ideas or any type of perspectives from the team. And then the next is lack of empathy. Just kind of the inverse that we talked about just a minute ago is that you need to be empathetic. You need to have emotional intelligence to be a visionary leader. So leaders who lack this empathy or emotional intelligence struggle to understand the needs and what motivates others. So if you don't know the needs or what motivates others because of either your micromanaging or lack of empathy, you can't drive passion into your team. And as a result, you can't execute a great vision. So they have difficulty in connecting with their team members, personally inspiring others to work towards this shared vision. And the next is fear of failure, which is common to all <laughs> all non-visionary leaders. And it's probably the most prevalent that I see. And it it goes back to not wanting to challenge the status quo. Leaders who are afraid of failure um, overly or overly risk adverse, and they avoid taking any bold initiatives or pursuing ambitious goals. So you can imagine 
how this stifles a great idea generating team, how it stifles passion, how it stifles innovation. If every time you come up with a great idea and it gets crushed or doesn't go to the next step, or even worse, what I've seen is they'll accept it. And then as soon as the team starts making progress, it gets squashed. That's even worse because it affects trust. It affects loyalty, anything that you can imagine. So they prioritize safety and stability uh, over innovation. And I used the great quote by Seth Godin, which was, uh, safe is risky. And it's so true. It's three words, but it's just so risky. I put that up on the board when I talk about people who have this fear of failure. I go, safe is risky. Everybody, there hasn't been any great product over all of our generations that hasn't gone through failure. Our greatest visionaries are the ones with the greatest number of failures. But guess what? They also have the most impactful successes as a result and have changed our world for the better. So they prioritize, for whatever reason, the safety and stability over innovation, experimentation. They limit the ability for others to realize visionary ideas. And the next is narrow-mindedness. Leaders who are narrow-minded close off what I call diverse perspectives. They struggle to think creatively. They can envision future alternatives. They resist input from others. They're dismissive of ideas. So I could go on and on. They're dismissive of these ideas. They challenge their beliefs. You can imagine the non-motivating culture and environment that that creates. So what I want you to look at as I'm going through these is what does the culture look like between these two companies? One where you embrace failure, one where you embrace risk, one where you embrace a vision, and one where you embrace a stepped process to successfully executing that vision through the visionary and empowering others to actually succeed in achieving that goal versus what we're talking about here in this type of leadership. So they, they resist input from others, they're dismissive ideas, they challenge beliefs, it's on and on and on limiting their ability to develop a visionary outlook for the future. I mean, I say limiting, I would say probably not in existence. So that's a, that's a big one as well. So ego and arrogance is another one. This kind of falls in line with what we talked about up here with micromanaging, short-term focus, resistance to change. It's, it's this ego. And the ego comes from, I'll give you a great example. So this ego comes from Let's say there's a great idea from a team member and that idea gets actually commercialized. Well, they can either take credit for it and lose trust in, in loyalty, or they can be humble and take the credit for leading a great team to executing a great idea that they came up with. But ego and arrogance takes over people that are non-visionary. They just don't have the self-awareness that they should be humble or they feel like others need to get their approval no matter what the circumstance, meaning that if somebody else gives an idea, they're going to take credit for it. So leaders who are driven by ego or arrogance, they prioritize their interest and agendas over the needs of the team or the organization or company brand as a whole. They're more concerned with maintaining their status and power than, than setting goals and a compelling vision to inspire others to achieve a vision. So it's a really big problem on ego and arrogance. Lack of strategic thinking, the opposite, polar opposite of what visionaries do. Um, they lack strategic thinkings where they struggle to develop a clear and cohesive vision for the future. They focus on day-to-day -day all the time, 24-7. They're tactical issues without considering broad context of what they're trying to achieve. So there's long-term implications to this too, is that you just keep following the great visionaries versus moving ahead of these visionaries. So, so I say by recognizing and addressing these traits, leaders can cultivate what I call this more visionary mindset. So I've given you traits of visionaries and the polar opposite of non-visionaries. I think it's a great outline for those to look at that truly are dedicated to want to become visionary and what it takes to do that. And, and don't try to be everything, but certainly 
check the ones you want to check on the visionary side and get rid of the things on the non-visionary side. Stop it. Stop being arrogant. Be more humble. Be a strategic thinker. Empower other people to succeed in the vision. You are not going to succeed without a great team that has a passion and you driving the vision for them and showing them how to execute it. So thank you again for listening to the Visionary Chronicles today. And also wanted to put it out there. If any of you have any questions, and I, and I had a lot of comments from people listen to our podcast, how do I reach out to you? And, and if I have questions as to what Liquid Mind does. So we work with brands where we set this cohesive marketing strategy and activation plan, ongoing investment analysis, brand equity development and growth. So we have a lot of different areas we work with, but uh, we also have, if you go to the website, liquidmindsite.com, L-I-Q-U-I-D-M-I-N-D-S-I-T-E.com, you can actually go there and schedule a free meeting. You got questions, anything? I'm more than happy if you got questions on the podcast, feel free to reach out to me and I'll give you the contact information here in a minute. But just wanted to put that out there because people were wondering after listening to the podcast, how do they reach out to us at, um, or me in particular at Liquid Mind? Uh, dot, liquidmindsight.com. So, so stay true, stay authentic, be different and be great. As I always say, enjoy the journey and thank you for the time. I obviously appreciate those that listen to the podcast and with the visionary chronicles. Also, thank you for listening to the, the podcast. We're again, ranked as number one global visionary podcast, top 50 for 2022 through two, now 2024 with Feedspot, top 50 marketing podcast. Proud of that as well. And releasing my, my visionary brand book. And, but with the release of the book, um, we just, uh, after a lot of work, um, set up a new site called thevisionaryfiles.com. So the visionary brand, the success formula behind the world's most visionary brands. I have over 18 courses and two hours of uh, videos, chapter by chapter, chapter and verse. Um, with the books released, the Visionary Brand Master Course. So the Master Court at, at VisionaryFiles.com has 18 video learning lessons. Um, and over the past, I'm going to say now nine weeks, we've had over, I'm going to say 2,100 or so brands and entrepreneurs taking the Master Course. So I always say, hey, take a look. You know, it's, it, it gives you a lot of information. You can skip from chapter nine to chapter one. So that's one of the benefits. But I find visual, we have not only the visuals, with the course, but we obviously have the audio and the video for you to look at as well. So, um, so take a look, um, would appreciate that. And also with the visionary chronicles, if you enjoy what we talk about, um, please, um, pass this along to others, um, review the podcast. If you get a chance to do so through Apple podcast, super simple to do so. Just click the stars there if you really like it and, um, pass a comment on there and we'll mention you on the podcast as well. And also, if you need to reach out to me at Liquid Mind, I'm at Brian, B-R-Y-N, at liquidmindsite.com, L-I-Q-U-I-D-M-I-N-D-S-I-T-E.com, Facebook at Brian Smeltzer, the number 33, uh, on Instagram, Brian underscore Smeltzer, and then at Twitter at Brian Smeltzer, and then profile at LinkedIn. So if you got any questions, happy to answer those, and appreciate, again, your time, and I look forward to the next Visionary Chronicles podcast.